day uh, six, I think. So we have console IO, we have our CCP running. Let's actually make the CCP do something useful. The CCP is actually a pretty simple program. Uh, this is the original uh, CPM80 version. I'll find the startup code. It reads a either a command from the console or a command from a script that's currently being run. It then parses it and it runs the command. There may be some built-in commands. There uh, are uh, dear arrays type save rename user and everything else and for everything else the CCP will load the program into memory and run it the program may then return to the CCP's loop or it may restart CPM uh, the user doesn't see any difference at all other than a delay of about a second as CPM restarts it doesn't like clear the screen or show a banner or anything uh, that way the program gets to reuse the RAM that the CCP is using and on CPM80 that is two kilobytes if I remember correctly who knows what it will be for, for our one so we have a command loop we have some initialization code CPM80 it actually gets sent information by the uh, BDOS, uh, sorry, by the BIOS, because in CPM80, the BIOS loads the BDOS and the CCP, and then it jumps to the CCP to here, or here, usually here, and then it's the job of the CCP to reset and initialize the BDOS. But the way we're doing it, due to the differ, differing requirements of the 6502, and you know we have to relocate stuff and so on, the CCP is loaded and executed by the BDOS, so the BDOS has already initialized itself. So in fact, there's nothing we really need to do here. Uh, we do need to handle submit files. These are scripts, but... I am not going to do that just yet. Uh, also, CPM80 has the ability, you can load the CCP, then write stuff to the keyboard buffer, jump here, so CCP start, and it will execute the command in the buffer. I have no idea what this is for. Actually, I do know what it's for. It's to allow programs to run other programs easily. Uh, yeah, now I think of it. But of course you can only run one. Let's just not worry about this for now. This is going to be pretty simple. So we want to print a prompt and read a command. So printing the prompt. We are in CPM80, the CCP keeps track of the current disk, but there is a BDOS function for that. Uh, get disk. Reset. Exit. Uh, get set user code. User codes are another thing I'm going to ignore for now. User code, here we go, return current disk, uh, entry 25. And we have to implement that. Uh, user codes are an idea that really didn't work. Um, it, they allow you to uh, subdivide a disk directory into 16 user areas. They are a kind of directory. The problem is the VDOS doesn't really understand them very well. So the user code doesn't get baked into the FCB. 
So every time you do something that touches an FCB, you have to remember to set the user code by calling this function. And heaven help you if you get it wrong, because really bad things will happen, as it will look for and write uh, directory entries with the wrong user code, and it will mangle your disk. Okay, get drive. We have a section for drive management somewhere. Uh, this one will do. So proc entry, get drive. That is pretty straightforward. We simply get um, drive, store it to parampla zero and return. Okay, so back into our CCP. We get the current drive, which is a value, a zero based value. Add on A to turn it into a drive letter. Print it. Print the prompt. And now we want to set up for reading a string. This means we need a buffer to put the string in. Uh, I'm just thinking. So now the easiest thing is to just create a 128 byte buffer down here. Uh, but in fact, we've got one. But I'm not going to do that. We have to pass information from the CCP to the program that's being executed. That information consists of the command line uh, and the FCBs of the more or less the first two parameters. And to just make this simple, I am going to put these at the beginning of the stack page. So let me just fire up the emulator again and run it. Okay, so it's been executed reasonably. So if we dump stack page, this is 256 bytes of RAM that the stack, the CPU stack uses. It starts at the top and works down. The uh, TIX 2 doesn't really use a lot of stack unless you're doing really dumb stuff. And so I am going to steal a bit of the top of this. The uh, We want enough space for one FCB, which is 32 bytes, plus the maximum possible command line, which is 128 bytes. So that is A0 worth of bytes. So that will use up in the worst case, this much of it. Hmm. Now I look at it, that's quite a lot. But the alternative is to uh, well, the alternative is that we need to allocate some memory somewhere to pass to the program being executed. which is quite hard. Um, because we are expecting, well, we have to allow the CCP to be overwritten by the program if the program wants to use the memory. So just pointing the program at something in the CCP buffer isn't so hot because that will force the 
that will force the program to copy everything out of that. We could we could require the program to uh, create some buffers at a known location and as part of the relocation process we poke stuff into those buffers. That might be preferable. Um, of course, it'll only use this much memory if you're using the entire 128 bytes of command line, which is very unusual. But you can see that uh, MOS itself, its U'd stack up to about here. So I didn't realize it was quite so much. This will be used for like interrupt handlers and so on. So that only gives us a safety margin of a factor of two, which I don't think is enough. Um, Okay, let's see if we can pass the buffer in as into the program um, by writing it into its memory. In the meantime, we are actually going to have to create a buffer here. So uh, we create a buffer of 128 bytes here. Okay, and we read a line. Oops, I did not run my build thing. Okay, so now if we run that, this is now actually looking like a. That's not working. It's beginning to look a bit more like CPM. Uh, Oh yes, um, I also fixed Control U. Last time I said it did a new line and printed a backslash. Uh, I went and looked up what it actually did and that was complete nonsense. It prints a hash sign at the end to indicate that that line has been cancelled and then moves on to the next line. Um, the reason for this stuff like retype, this one, and the way Control U is handled is because CPM was originally intended to be operated on a teletype. And on a teletype, if I type a, if I make a mistake and I press the backspace key, it does indeed backspace and it deletes the character from the buffer, but it's not like it can take it off the paper. So the next character you type over types what was already there and you get a mess. Uh, for occasional mistakes, that's fine, but imagine trying to retype an entire command line. So uh, over the top of the existing one, so Control U just goes on to a new line and a blank bit of paper. So we have a command line, and it's not really a lot of code. Let me get rid of that. So we are actually going to. Uh, there we go, read command line. How does this work? This is all submit file stuff. These are, those are scripts. We'll get on to that later. Uh, user code management that we're just ignoring. Um, Where 
is the uh, it's the code that actually does the work. That should be about here somewhere. Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, R buff read buffer. Okay. Uh, so what it does is it then um, make sure it's zero terminated. So we read the length of the command line. Um, like so. Let me think. We have the length and some text. Uh, the length is a in that case is four so zero one two three four we do indeed want to add one to the command line length uh, we then convert it to uppercase and yes this does mean that you can't pass lowercase text into a CPM program on the command line. Just deal with it. So here we have our length. Uh, read the byte. Uh, there is, in fact, a utility here for translating to uppercase. Now, the 8080 and the Z80s uh, secret superpower are these one byte conditional return and call instructions. So they allow you to do this kind of logic really densely. What this does you you load a character into A and call here and it says is it less than small a then immediately return is it greater than small z if so immediately return otherwise translated to uppercase and return and that is nine bytes uh, the 6502 secret superpower is indexing where you get basically for free a uh, 8 to 16 bit addition in a lot of instructions not all of them but a lot of them so we are going to have to do this the hard way so is this greater than a capital A and we want greater than, we have to do greater than or equal to, so actually we want it, is it greater than or equal to a capital A? Yes. Is it less than small a? Is it less than, carry clear, a uh, the character after a Z? If so, then we know this is a lowercase letter, therefore, and it. So we have 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bytes. Of course, it's not a subroutine. So we then want to write it back at increment and go round again. Um, in fact, I was going to test for zero and exit, but it's cheaper and easier to simply compare with the length and do it like that. Okay. We have hopefully we should have finished reading the command line. So I am going to test that by doing this. Uh, where is the caps lock key? This one? Yes. So it hangs, we break, we see that our buffer is at 2071 and there's a B at the end, there is indeed a B at the end and this is all translated to uppercase. Good! Right. Next stage is we want to parse it. Now this is with a bit where it gets really interesting. Because the way it parses the command is it tr it assumes that the it starts with a file name. And of course, in CPM as soon as you do anything with a file name, you need to turn it into an FCB. So there is a huge chunk of code which actually starts here and goes on and on. This is really dense code to here. So that's nice. So we are going to make ourselves a zero point a zero page variable which is um, I was going to say a pointer, but this is the six five oh two. We don't want to use pointers, we want to use indexing. So we need to, we're going to need to parse several FCBs. So this is going to be a helper routine. This one we do need a pointer. And down here we want to create ourselves a FCB. 
and an FCB is 33 bytes long, we're not using random access. Okay, so pause it. And we want to Uh, we need to set up our index pointer and parse the FCB. And the first thing we're going to do is to store, is to set up our pointer like so. Okay. And in fact, this is going to be a zero because it's going to be relative to the first character of the command line. So this is the code that actually does the FCB stuff. So D blank skips white space. Straightforward. Um, If it's a space, uh, if it's a space, a tab this is only doing a space. Okay, well that's easy enough. So break if it's not a space, otherwise otherwise loop. So our pointer is now looking at the beginning of the command line. So the first thing we want to do is to check to see if there is a drive letter. Um, Do we need to worry about end of string here? I th we do need to check the first byte. So if the first byte is zero, we've, got, we've uh, appended zero to the end of the command line here, if the first byte of the command line is a zero, then obviously there can be no drive letter, but also there can be no command. Therefore, no FCB. So this is an error.
We now know that the first letter is not a zero, which means the second letter is going to be either a colon, meaning that there is, there is a, in fact, a drive letter here, a, uh, a zero, meaning there is a one letter file name, or anything else. So, uh, we do want to load it. Can we do slightly better? There is a, I can load y indexed with x, and I can load x indexed with y. So let's actually put that, that's the drive letter. Because then that will allow us to... No, let's do this the other way around. So we now load... Is this a colon? Yes. Therefore, A must contain a drive letter. So let's turn that into a To the one based drive numbering scheme and um, am I actually going to get a chance to use the bit instruction? No, no. Okay, we want what we want to do is test to see whether it's got the top four bits set. Oh, actually, we can just do a comparison. We want to do a less than comparison. Is it less than 16? Actually, no. Is it greater than or equal to 16? Carry set. That means the drive letter is out of range. Otherwise, uh, yeah, we do want to do. Otherwise, we store it at and the beginning of the FCB. skip over the drive. Do I, did I do set break if any? I did not. So we should have successfully parsed the drive letter. And it also occurs to me that we probably want to 
wipe the FCB so the the drive needs to get reset to zero then we want to keep writing spaces because the file name is padded with spaces so actually that wants to be fcb dr for drive so we have a loop where we increment y uh, let's actually load space store it until we reach the last extension byte which is e3 and then it'll stop okay uh, but then we want to store zeros over the remaining four bytes of the FCB that's EX, S1, S2 and RC until we reach until we've done RC Right. E three is undefined. No, there are it's apparently called T three. I got these names from the digital research documentation. T three. Okay. So this should get us to the point where we have the drive set. We now want to start reading file name characters. Okay, this is irritating because we have to index two things at once. We are iterating over the command line whose index is in Y. Uh, we also need to iterate over the FCB itself. The FCB is a pointer in direction, so that index register must be in Y. However, the command line indirect, uh, the command line indexing is that's from here. The command line indexing is in is using is using an absolute address, so that can use X. So let's put the offset into x. That means this has to be in y. So the file name starts at f1.
So we are going to keep reading characters. Test to see if it's a valid file name character. Uh, we are going to stop if it's the if we reach the end of the string. Test to see if it's a valid file name character. At which point we write it to the FCB increment both here we want to test is it a dot if so it uh, stop parsing here. Is it a space? If so, stop parsing here. In fact, if it's a space, then we know that there can be no more characters, so let's just stop. However, if it's a dot, we have to deal with the extension. Have we reached the first extension byte? Stop if we have. OK. And in fact, if it's the end of the line, then this is also a case where we have to exit. Isn't it like? So now we want to skip valid characters until we reach a dot. This was going to truncate the, uh, the file name part of the file name to eight characters. So is it Is it a dot? Oh yeah, and we also, if it's not a valid file name character, then we want to uh, fail. So if it's a dot, then Stop. We know that it can't be a space or a zero.
So we know we are not at the end of the line. Um, Invalid characters are still not allowed at this point. But we do now need to... No, wait, it's not a dot. And it's not a space. And it's not a zero. Okay, read the next character. Um... If it's a zero, then we've reached the end of the line and there is nothing more to do. If it's not a valid file name character, this is not a valid file name, so error out. And we want to increment x here because this is all pre-decremented, probably. Uh, so is it a is it a space if so exit? And I think that does us. So if it's a letter, well, if the last thing read, the thing that stopped us reading the file name is a letter, then it will be consumed and discarded. We read the next thing. And we will keep going round until we see a dot, or end of line, or a space. OK. So this is going to be the same code here, just slightly different. So we get a character, uh, do the test to see if it's the end of the line, do the test to see if it's valid, if it's a inval, uh, yeah, we stick it in the FCB, which the Y is already set to the right place. But this time we are giving up when we reach T3. It'd be nice to be able to factor this out, but given that it's full of branches out of this code, I think that would be hard. Okay. Now we want to discard any more. file name characters. So that's going to be this code again. And in fact, this is still full of branches and things, so we can't use this either. But it is in fact the same code. So this should work.
Now, one of the things we want to test for is just a drive letter, because that's a valid command. It just changes the current drive. So that would load a character here. It's a end of line. So we go down to exit. Okay, that looks reasonable. Um, we do want to write our updated uh, command offset so that X is now pointing to the character after the end of the FCB. Oh, blast. Uh, it's also the job of the FC of this parsing code to deal with wildcards. So if the user type uses a wildcard like star dot star, then uh, this code here needs to uh, needs to um, convert those to question marks. So so read the file name part. Is it a star? If so, consume the character Hmm. So what we need to do here is write question marks to turn to do this. So we're going to want to keep writing question marks until we reach the end of the current file name segment. Uh, the issue is we do actually want to increment the the read pointer so i think what we do is we change the character we've read into a question mark Then we're going to de decrement x uh, is that right? This is going to so we're going to keep reading stars until we uh, fall off the bottom here. So in, this will be full. Uh, a, the character just read, is going to be a question mark, not a dot. So we want this code here to skip it, which it will. Question mark is a valid file name character. 
So the next time round we'll get a dot. And then we go on to the next bit. Yes, this should work just fine. Maybe. And the same thing happens here. Missing said until any is valid file name character not defined. That is true. So the valid file name characters. Uh, anything which is um, anything which is graphic is invalid. So we can say we want a we want a less than if it is strictly less than thirty two. Then die. Uh, this is just this. I'm just reusing this piece of code that sets carry and returns because we're using the carry flag up here to indicate validity. Um, and we we can't just return because we know the carry is clear. We have to set it. Anything that is bigger or equal to one two seven is invalid. Uh, these characters are all invalid, so a question mark We should not be seeing any spaces in this code, so it doesn't matter what we do there. Anyway, space uh, equals is invalid. Dot is invalid. Colon, semicolon, left angle bracket, right angle bracket. Otherwise, we're good. Range error. Well, that's annoying. Can I break this up at all? I'm not sure. It's these branches. Uh, we can do that. Okay, let's have a so this is two bytes. Three, four, five. That's five bytes, and by putting it into a subroutine call, we get it down to three. That's not going to help. These breaks are, yeah, break if is cheap. A simple Z break is expensive. These loops are 
expensive because each end loop is three bytes for a jump back to the beginning. What I'd like to do is to common out the, this code because this chunk of code and the same chunk above are identical. It's just we have a branch there, a branch there, a branch there, and a branch there, all of which can exit the loop. So I don't think we can. Okay. In fact, that's two bytes. Two bytes, three, four. Inlining that, it will do just fine. Okay, let's run this and see what happens. So we type in a command line. Uh, if I can remember where the various keys are in this thing. Semicolon, colon. C colon A B st star dot X. Right, it hangs in that jump loop. We're here. 2049 um, I can change registers can't I R set okay so R set PC 2 2 4 so we should be at this JSR step once 2057 we are here uh, AX is our FCB and is going into 21DD which is all zeros so skip uh, So I skip white space. So we load the command offset. 215E is our buffer, which is correctly zero terminated. There is no white space, so load the byte, compare it with a space, it's not a space, break if it's not, which is not and return. Wipe the FCB. This is the offset of the drive byte. Store it. It's already a zero so that won't do anything. And now we are writing eight spaces. I am sure that oh, this is the last one. I was just miscounted. Wait. Oh, we're writing 11. Okay. There we go. And we're down here. We're erasing four bytes of metadata. Right. So now if we dump our 
FCB we see a zero followed by four, eight, eleven spaces and four zeros. Okay, check for drive letter. There is a drive letter. Where are we? We're going around that loop again. Right, now we've finished. So load the command offset into X, which is zero. Read in the drive letter, 43, that's an A. Was it a zero if we reached the end of the line? No. Read the actual drive letter, uh, read the colon into Y, 3A, that's a colon. Was it a colon? Yes. So convert the drive letter into a zero base number and throw a one base number so a is one b is two c is three correct is it in range yes store it in the FCB. Reload command line offset into X. In fact, it never went out of X. So we can get rid of that line. Increment, increment. Okay, so there's our three. Read the file name. So we set up our right pointer, we get a character. It's a whatever that is, it's an A. It's not a zero, it's not a space, it's not a dot, it's not a star. Check to see if it's a valid file name character. So is it less than a space? No. Is it greater than 127? No. Is it that's wrong? Okay, good to know. And this will in fact fail. So set carry return. Uh, where were we? We were at two one. This is now going to bail out SEC return. And now we're right up at the top here going around the loop again. Okay. So write that back. Reboot. set to actually now I've changed the code so none of the offsets will work 204 uh, 2049 ABC set PC PC okay we're now up here let's just disassemble this 
uh, that RTS means we are here. We're looking for LDY one there. Okay, so uh, break at two oh nine two. Continue. We're here. So, read a character. It's still an A. No, 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 no. Check to see if it's a valid character. Carry is clear. It's fine. So store it in the FCB. We want the next. Did we reach the end? No. Uh, until equals. C two oh four B continue. That seems wrong. I did have a breakpoint in there, didn't I? Actually, let's just do. Set PC to a four B step. That does not seem like it's working right. Okay, let's just get rid of that because we now know that's at two oh four nine. Put a breakpoint at two oh four nine, continue A star dot B. Okay, this is our FCB code. Disassemble that. This two oh nine four is where we want to go. Continue. Two oh nine four, we are at here. So write it, increment, have we reached the end? No, we haven't, so we go around again. This time, oh yeah, I will, two ones. Here is our FCB, so we see we have written an A in. So this time it's going to be a star. So it's not a space. It's not a dot. It is a star. So turn it into a question mark. Back up one. It's still valid because question marks are valid. We write it. We increment. We go around again. There is our question mark. So, the same thing happens. Right, so let's break at 20B012. So we now finished that bit. So let's Dump our FCB and oh yeah, go 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 go. There we go. So dump two one DC 
and there is our file name which consists of a three question marks four question marks that's eight in total so skip non file name characters well r is 3f which is a question mark so we've tested to see if it's a dot it's not a dot skip it pick up the new character was it a zero no was it a space no is it valid yes no Two e, two e's dot. That should not be there. Okay, uh, we want to go to two zero c three. Zero C three. Uh, did I get that address right? Two one D seven. That looks very wrong. That does indeed look extremely wrong. Yeah. Um, dump two one D seven. Okay, all zeros. change one line of code. Has the FCB moved somehow? Oh, the FCB moved because I deleted the JSR. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3. 2, 1, D, 3. There's our correct FCB. Right, so where are we? 2, 0, 9, 4. Should be filling it with question marks. B two C three. So now right, there is our correct stuff. We now know that R is still set. Why is R set? Two E is a dot. That's a valid character. Has BM not picked up the... I wonder if it didn't pick up the new file. Which sometimes happens. 20C3. Right, carry is set. It has, in fact, that was fine. It just didn't work. Uh, so 2e is a dot. It should have fallen out the bottom here. Okay, so this is where the JSR should be, so let's just try that again. Two zero C zero dot Is it a space? Is it too big? Is it any one of these things? Yeah. This is why we test. Okay. Let's try that one again, shall we? Star dot B to C zero to C three carry is still 
clear. They're still set. didn't pick up the file because I didn't run I didn't have my script running okay view 0 c3 go a star dot b uh, carry is clear So now we get the next character. But we've rather we've read the new character here, so we go around again, we see that it is a dot, so we end exit the loop. Uh with this one. So we're here. We're reading the extension. This should all be the same code. This time we're not reaching the end. So we read a character, which is our B. It's valid. We write it. Increment Y, increment X. Have we reached the end? Go back to the beginning. Right, a new character is. We haven't done that yet. Uh, wait. Wait, that. That fell off the bottom of the loop. So it thinks y is too big. So we haven't written these last two characters yet. So it shouldn't have fallen out the bottom of the loop. What is y set to? y is a. So zero, one, two, nine, A, T three. So this is B, C, D, E, F until equals. That worked. Uh, it doesn't look like it did, but um, it actually correctly passed it, went round the end. It should have hit that breakpoint, actually. Yeah, something moved. Um, two zero e six. Oh, I put the breakpoint in the wrong place. That's why. A dot b. Here is our. Here is our fcb, and the b is in the wrong place. The B is in the wrong place because if this, if reading the file name doesn't increment it sufficiently, then it won't be set. So 
ignore that. Now we just want to set it correctly to T1. Okay, I think that's working, to be honest. Um, let me just find uh, So here's the top of the FCB. So here's our code here. No, it's not. Uh, uh, I don't know where the FC, where the CCP loaded. None of this looks. Very familiar, to be honest. Okay, yeah, here we are. So if I find... I'm looking for this call. So we have a... a uh, here we go. Uh, Load AX with command FCB, pars FCB. So if you break at 204C, so we can type something in and then we can dump the FCB, uh, dump the FCB. So we see there is indeed the FCB we wanted. Continue. A dot B. Dumped to one D three. That's still not right. Read the file name. Read the extension. Why is it put this in the wrong place? Did I reboot it? I don't think I did. A dot B. Okay. Yeah, it's a work night, so I have just spent a day at work, which is why these there's this one and the last one are slightly more muddled than these usually are. Okay, 21D3. That's better. Okay, we have the file name part and the extension. And in fact, that's a bit misaligned. D5, that's better. Okay, a star dot bcd. A star has turned into question marks. bcd has not been read. A dot bcd. Put BC but not D mm. because, and right, this is a systematic error. Th Wipe the FCB, check for the drive, right? 
this is one after the uh, the last character of the file name. So in fact, let's change this to F8 plus one to, be, to make it clearer what it's doing. So read the extension, this should be T3 plus one. So a dot b c d dump one d five. Ah. Yeah, we go a dot b c d a star dot b c d. Still not working. So this is coming in with a question mark. So it should be advancing, picking up the next character, which is a dot, and then breaking. Let me skip the dot and go on to the actual first character. Great. So where is that code? This is uh, this is our validity checker. So let's go from here. This doesn't actually all seem to be particularly big code, to be honest. I think it's all fitting within 256 bytes. Uh, Okay, LDY1 is here, so we actually want to go to the next comparison against 2E here, 209A. So A star dot B C D. Right. That's that's an A, we're in the wrong place, but I think we are here. So let's go from here anyway. Yeah, compare for against a star, it's not a star, is it valid? Yeah, 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 yeah. Compare, branch, break at 20B2. Are all our question marks to OB2? Right. 3F is a question mark. So, was it a dot? No, it wasn't. Increment, so we're looking at the dot. Load it. 2E, that's a dot. Was it a space? No. Was it valid? Yes. Was it a dot? Yes. We're here. Skip the dot. Set Y to 9 to indicate we're starting on the extension. Load the byte. That's a B. So, there's our FCB so far. We have not written the extension. So where is this byte going? Because we have forgotten to put the comparison in here for a wildcard, that's why. So it's always, uh, it's not a dot, therefore it's always branching 
to here. That should be fine. That's valid. Yeah, so. R is 9, so this should be writing it to the FCB. D1D5. Yes, it did put it there. Okay, so we go around again, we pick up our character. It's a C. It should be valid. It's written. We go around again. This is our D. It's valid. We write it. We reach the end. We stop. So we have not read the next character. Uh, Okay, this is also wrong. Uh, yeah, if we break, if we break up here, A contains the character just being read. If we break here and fall off the end of the loop, a contains the previous character read, but Y has not been incremented. So I think that all of these need to be while loops with the branch at the top, which I, with the, the exit at the top. So we get the character, test it for zero, then we see if we've reached the end. If so, we break. And then we go around. That's annoying because it's. Um, it's another three bytes of code for this jump. But this means that this should work. So this now, instead of being a repeat until becomes a Z loop, end loop, Z loop, end loop. So here, when we break, we should have yeah, that's just pushed us over the limit for the invalid FCB stuff. Well, we know that carry is set, so actually this becomes a very simple if carry is set, return. Three bytes. So that's only one byte more than previously. Okay. A dot B C D. We are at uh, all the code's been rearranged, so I'm not quite sure where we're at. We are probably we are here. So yeah, you can see how far this is, the FCB's moved on.
to one D. Okay, so hmm. and of course, all my breakpoints are now in the wrong place. O four C Okay, A dot B C D and we are two one D E. Uh, there we go. A dot B C D. Right. A star dot B C D. Oh, good, that finally worked. Star A dot B C D. Right. So that, I believe, is correct. It has, print, it has inserted eight question marks and discarded the A. Star dot star. 11 question marks. Uh, AFL is the first three characters of the extension. This is the first eight characters of the file name. OK, I believe that to be working. Uh, actually, I'll just do one more. So it's set the drive letter and has set the extension. Good. OK, let's get rid of that. So our CCP is a mere 400 bytes. OK. Uh, the next thing to do is to try and uh, check to see if it's any of the commands we know about. Um, Oh, well, there was actually something I forgot to do. Two oh two oh four C it was. A colon. Right. The carry is clear, which is cr which is good because we think this is a uh, valid FCB for certain purposes. And it's got a drive letter and an empty file name. Good, good. And one more time. I just pressed return there. Carry is set, meaning. It thought that was invalid. And the FCB is unchanged. Uh, we do actually kind of want to test for um, empty lines. So we are going to. Uh, 
So it's if we've skipped the white space, then command line plus uh, well, that's balked this whole thing. Okay, let's just put this away. Let's just fix all that, shall we? That wasn't actually advancing anything. So this so this will update wrong key. Uh, leaves the updated command offset in X. So we can just do this if the command line is empty then we want to print a new line and go again Yeah, so we did actually forget to parse to test parsing spaces. So new line, good. Spaces return, good. Spaces command. Right, yeah. Notice how uh, when I type in a valid command, the cursor just goes to here. That's actually correct. In CPM, the cursor is it prints a carriage return after the command. And then it's the command's responsibility to move the cursor down before doing anything. And no, I do not know why it does that. OK, so we've passed the command and now we want to decode it. Checking for one of the intrinsic commands. So this is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, our four commands, if I find the relevant bit here, there we go, they all max out at four characters. So we can actually just test for the four characters uh, and as following space in the FCB, we don't have to deal with parsing the actual command line. This is why we wanted to parse it to an FCB before doing anything else. So our command table is dir arrays type save, rename, and user. So, command FCB is absolute, so we actually have one uh, and actually let's put a zero at the end of that. So we want to index through the FCB and also through the command table. So that's actually relatively straightforward as we have two index registers. So 
So for each command, uh, we want to load a byte from the command table, compare it with a byte from the FCP, uh, FCB. If they are not equal, then it obviously cannot be this command. Otherwise, loop until we reach an FCB offset of 4. And then stop. I mean, I want to check the last character to make sure it's a space. If it is a space, it's a match. It's not a match, then we want to advance to the next command. Uh, thing is, if we reach here, then X has been moved up, so it's pointing at the next byte. Which So for the next command, we actually want to round x up. So txa and with not 3, so let's see, adc4, dax. LD a command table comma x and keep going until that is zero. And if it's zero, then we have reached the end. So at this point, we uh, x is pointing at one of the commands or the last thing. So in order to get a command index, we just have to ASR A, ASR A, ASR A, ASR A, and return. So this should give me the command index in a on exit. Uh, oh, LSR A. All 
right. So, fuck up. Two oh four C, wasn't it? Oh, yes, we moved all this. This is the test for the empty command line. So here is where we parse it. This two oh six five is decode. So break out two oh five A and continue. Right. Uh, we are going to try for a type command. So, command table index. FCB index. Load a byte from the command table, that will be a D. Compare it with, actually let's just, here's the command table here's the file name. So it's not a D, so we break to here. Come to X to A, round down, add 4, put it back in X. So X is now 4 pointing at the next command. load the byte and check to make sure that we haven't hit the end of the table. So back to the beginning. This is ERA which is also incorrect. Reset the FCB index, load, compare, doesn't match. Go around again. Right, this one should match. Load, compare, Okay, looks good. Have we reached the end of the command? No. Go for the next one. Okay. Go around again. And the last time. Y is now 4. We didn't take the branch. We're now here. So decrement x to keep it in range. No, no, that's not going to work. Because uh, if the first character was invalid, we decrement x and it puts it in range of the previous command. But anyway, this sh Hang on, if the first character is... No, we can only get here if Y is 4. So this is fine. We have... X must be... X must be pointing at the beginning of the next command. Yeah, that's fine. So decrement X... Uh, check to make sure that the next FCB byte is a space. And in fact, we know what the Y must be for. Therefore, this is always going to be character 5. Uh, that makes no difference to the size, but... So is it a space? Yes, it's a space. We are here. T uh, X is OB. So we put that into A and shift, 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 leaving A as 0. Because I don't want to shift it by 4. I want to divide it by 4, which is a shift of 2. OK, so re reload type. We're here. 
So let's just skip over the decode and A is 2. 0, 1, 2. Good. Let's try user. Skip over the decode. A is 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Good. Right, let's try something difficult. Decode. A is 6. Excellent. That's exactly what we wanted. And just in case, let's do a DIR. A0. Right. That wasn't so bad. So that has decoded the command and we now know what the user actually wanted to do. So now we want to execute it. And we are going to start with type because this is the simplest. But first we actually want a dispatch table. So Okay, so let's just put all of these in. Uh, ERA type save ren user. Transient. Okay, so this is actually the same um, this is actually the same execution code that we are using in like everywhere else. So where did I put it? Here. Uh, that's actually that's using a pointer to do it. Um, Actually, we can improve this code, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to go with the simple code. So the way you'd improve it is by uh, pushing the values onto the stack and then doing a RTS. Uh, however, this requires all these addresses to be one different. So, yeah. So we're going to create a general purpose pointer and we are going to create a call temp, which we can JSR in order to get a 
call to a subroutine. So now we should have a, we can now execute commands, all the commands. Uh, I'm still not convinced about that carriage return, but anyway, we are at, we're going to implement type. Now, for type to work, we need to parse a file name. And luckily, we already have a uh, we already have a routine for doing that. And we're going to have to have us. I mean, we can re. We're not touching the command FCB again in this piece of code, but we actually need more than one FCB anyway. So we are going to parse the parameter into user FCB. If it is invalid, we are going to print a message so this is and this is BIOS DDoS write string and we now want to so at this point we really want to do a long jump back to the top and reset the stack but uh, it's actually easier to just do to do it like this and yes we could do a BCS to here but not once we put all the rest of the code in so anyway we now have an FCB uh, we want to make sure it's not empty actually I don't think it matters Okay, so we now want to open it. And we know how to open FCBs. Which is... Like this. So we open the FCB, that seems to work fine. Uh, if there's an error, we print a message. In fact, we're also going to put a new line in here. like so. We are now going to read it. And I'm going to reuse the 
command line buffer for this because we now no longer need it. So so this is a loop where we set the TPA uh, the DMA rather if you haven't done that one yet we read a sector And then we are going to print it. Oh yes, and this needs to break if carry set. So read a byte. Uh, read a byte into a print increment our counter until zero, at which point we reach the end of the sector. And we keep going until we reach the end of the file. In fact, there's one more thing we want to do, which is to check for a end of file character because CPM doesn't track the lengths of files in bytes. There's a convention that uh, file text files end in a control Z character. And if you use DOS, this will uh, seem familiar. And if it was, then we want to stop by printing a trailing new line. So now that assembles, but it's not going to work because there's one thing we haven't done yet. Over here in the BDOS, uh, do you remember back when we did the uh, things like open file and we processed FCBs by converting them, uh, by taking the drive byte and turning it into a zero base drive byte with the user number in, etc., etc., and we stashed it in old FCB drive. Well, we're going to have to undo that on exit. So, where's our... here we go. So, the first thing is to... is to reset that. So now we can do old FCB drive if it's positive, that is something has written to it, then this means that old FCB drive contains the drive of uh, the drive that used to be in the FCB, and that only ever happens when param is an FCB. So we can do So that should work. 
and it turns out that we do have a readme.txt file which I actually now recall doesn't have a control Z terminator on it but never mind it'll just print some zeros so we run it and we do type readme.txt and we press return and nothing happens <laughs> of course it doesn't work what was I expecting? Did it even print a new line? That's not doing anything. Uh, is it? So it obviously isn't calling entry type. Do you get, ah. <laughs> Let's use the right register. Okay, I won't edit that bit out. So, press return. Interesting. Well, it did something. I saw a C exclamation mark appearing. So we set the DMA, we try to do a read, I don't think there's anything particularly controversial about that code, oh well. Looks like we're just going to have to debug our way through it again. Uh, this is the CCP. Nice to have some symbol information and so on, but of course no debugger will know where the programs have been loaded. This looks like our dispatch code, 2081. Okay. Type readme.txt. Yep. We are now in type. So next, it's printed a new line. Parse the FCB. FCB looked fine. And that went into 2301. I know what's happening. Uh, what's happening is I am forgetting to consume white spaces before calling parse FCB. Uh, however, I am curious to know why. Ah. Uh, Okay, and there is actually something else we need to do in the dispatch code in the BDOS. Here we go. Uh, we need, yeah, we need to preserve the carry. So we are going to push the processor status word, and we're going to push the processor status word and pop the processor status word. So let's just give that a try and see if it still, no, it still doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to have to check to make sure the errors are propagated correctly because I bet they're not. Uh, but over here in the CCP under pars FCP, we do actually want to put back that call to skip white space. Uh, we have called it here to check for an empty command line, but it'll do no harm to do it again. Okay. Does it work? Ooh, ooh. That's better, 
but that's because we haven't put in uh, set DMA address like so and that where does that live probably under disk system this is trivial uh, user DMA zero Okay, and yeah, let's try that. Run. Well, um, yeah, that was a thing. So this text is actually what's in the file. So let's just put our control Z in here. The problem is it didn't print the first four characters of it. Why? And we do expect garbage at the end because, no, we don't expect garbage, because it should have read a complete sector. I know why. It's because a sector is 128 bytes. And uh, what I was doing here was expecting rollover to set it to zero. So... So, nasty hack. Whoa. Okay, maybe that nasty hack was not quite working. So what's supposed to happen is that we start at 128 and work up and by we compensate for that by subtracting 128. This means that when rollover happens at the end of the sector, we roll over from 255 to 256, which is zero, rather than from 127 to 128, which is not zero. So why did that produce garbage? Okay, luckily that remained in the same place, so we parse the FCB, we open the file, uh, well, let's take a look at the FCB which is in 2304, yep, uh, there is our FCB file name and we can tell by the way that these values are populated, we have the current uh, the record count is one, indicating there is one record. We have, we have, right, uh, this is the, the high byte of the extent. It set the top, by, the top bit to indicate that this file has not been changed and therefore uh, we can just discard it on close and we see a allocation bitmap with block 4 being ours. All right. And I did not mean to type an N there. Let's try that one again.
So uh, we're calling set DMA where we're going to be writing to 2263, which as you can see is the command line buffer. Uh, and in fact this is overwritten the previous sector so it has read the sector correctly we can tell that so anyway we want to uh, set the DMA we now do a sequential read okay 2263 here is the sector we read no it's not carry set that failed why did that fail well carry is set so we actually break to here to the end of the file we print a new line And we go back to the top of the program. So let's try a type of file that doesn't exist. Well, that ain't right. Uh, so clearly, the second time round, it is not reading the file properly. Uh, is it not resetting the FCB? I mean, here is the FCB we had. That looks fine. That should have worked. Okay. Well. to be easy okay set the there's the FCB we are going to read it so a step that takes us into the BIOS Oh, that's interesting. That drive should be a one. Uh, don't think this is working. Does LDA set the sets the negative flag. Yeah, that should have worked. Uh, oh. Oh. Read sequential returns an error code. So it's overwritten param. Okay, let's add another Let's add a word variable. Uh, so param is going to be the input parameter. R param is going to be the return parameter. Uh, uh, or I could just push it onto the stack. So 
push A, TXA push X, TYA push Y. This is very traditional. This is this is the how you push your th your three uh, registers and status byte onto the stack on the 6502. The 65CO2 has push X and push Y instructions. So we now want to do this in the opposite order. So pull A, T, A, Y, pull A, T, A, X, pull A, P, L, P, return. So now in we want to go and find all the places where we Uh, so transfer X to A push A compare A with three one X is uh, there's still a copy in in A for con out and return. Con out doesn't touch the return value. Right string doesn't touch the return value. Read line doesn't touch the return value. New line, reset, honestly reset might. Uh, Open file returns the carry flag. Read sequential does return a error value. Login drive, don't know about. Okay, let, so let's try that again. Hmm. So it's only the first time that that happens. Only the first time after a hard reset. Very interesting. So where was our break point 2081 okay new line pars fcb open the file And that has correctly opened the file, but it hasn't put the drive back the way it was. So something in the BDOS is still wrong. So convert user FCB uh, loads the drive byte copies it to old FCB drive okay open file calls new user FCB so that will fall through here
So is param not pointing at the right thing? Okay, uh, so we our BIOS is loaded at one nine zero zero. So looking for CCP oh no that's put at the end there uh, couldn't open CCP is here BIOS entry point unimplemented is immediately after that looks like our push and pop so let's go from 19C0 yeah there we are so let's put a breakpoint at 19CA and continue. So okay, so this is exiting from uh, read string. Oh yeah, and those are our registers. So we load the FCB drive value which should be FF, it is. That is negative, so we skip on. So let's put a breakpoint at uh, 3, 4, 5. And get rid of the one at 19CA and continue. Clear. CA. Continue. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is probably open. A is zero. That's the old drive. That's wrong. So param is 2304, so if we look at that we see it's our readme.txt. Oh, 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 this is actually correct. This is correct. Um, because we didn't specify a drive letter in the command, in the path there, therefore it's going to be using the default drive. But anyway, it does actually seem to have opened the... Yeah, that's, that's all perfectly normal. But at least we seem to be in roughly the right place to debug the read sequential. We're just coming out of this now. We are here. So set DMA, read sequential. BIOS entry point 2304. So we store our parameter in 45. We make sure that old FCB drive is FF. We compute the jump table stuff and jump 
Right, we are now in read sequential. We convert the user FCB. So this is actually the first time we've used the default drive thing. So load the old drive, which is zero, and stash it. Extract the drive. If it is negative, which it is, replace it with the current drive number, which is zero. That's correct. So Uh, put that in A, save it as the active drive, or in the current user, and update the FCB. That's all zeros, so that's fine. And then we go to select active drive. Which is here. Now, We call the BIOS to make this disk active. Did it work? Yes. We copy the DPH. Uh, yeah, I'm going to assume that this works. So we know this must be at least a little bit reliable or uh, we wouldn't be loading the CCP. So break 1EDF, continue, okay. So this takes us back to read sequential. Which is here. Okay, load the current record, which is zero, we're in the first record, load the record count, uh, sorry, compare with the record account, record count, which is one, we're not at the end of the file, well, the end of the extent, rather, so that skips ahead to here, get the F, the disk block value in XA, Again, we can assume that works, and it has it indeed. Uh, XA is showing block four. Store it in current sector. Ch check whether there's a block allocated, which there is. So we go here. So current sector. Yeah, so we load the block shift, which for us is three, and we start converting the block number to a sector number. Add on the current record number, which is zero. Well, add, add on the, the sector offset in the block, which is zero. So, move the FCB on to the next record from last time. Y is indeed still pointing at the current record. So if we look at 2304, we can see the current record is now a 1. Set the user DMA by calling the BIOS. Uh, uh, 1C6DEF1C70. 
done, read the sector. Okay, and exit. Put the FCB back the way it was, although nothing has changed, so whatever. We're now back in the CCP. We've just done a read sequential. Load Y with 128. Store that in temp. Uh, Okay, it has correctly read a sector's worth of stuff, and that looks like the right sector too, which is, you know, nice. So load a byte, A is E8. Y is zero. Type readme.txt. There you go. Does it work again? No. But at least it worked the first time. Well, that's irritating. But at least we have successfully executed our first internal CPM command. So it's now quarter past 11 and I want to finish. So I am going to finish here. Let's go and figure out what's going on there next time, shall we? See you then, then.